In this video, we're going to take a look at a neural network type called a Elman neural network, which is a simple recurrent or SRN neural network type. The Elman neural network is often compared with the Jordan neural network, which is very similar. We'll see Jordan neural networks in a later video. The first, let's look at why exactly we would want to have a simple recurrent network or a temporal neural network. Let's look at a example that Jeffrey Elman, the inventor of the Elman neural network, demonstrated for this. This is a temporal XOR. First, let's just look at regular XOR. Regular exclusive OR, you're going to have input and output. So that'll be the input. And the output for that would be 0. Then we looked also at 0, 1, oops, 0, 1, which is 0 exclusive or 1. That's going to be a 1 and then 1 exclusive or 0 is going to also be a 1 and 1 exclusive or 1 is going to be a 0. Now let's look, this is how we would present this for a normal neural network. We'd have two input neurons and one output neuron. Well we're going to look at a temporal version of the exclusive or. So we're going to reduce this all to just one long string of numbers. So it's going to be 0, comma 0, comma 0, first row, comma 0, comma 1, comma 1. Okay, we're just flattening out the exclusive or, comma 1, comma 0, comma 1. That's that row. And then 1, comma 1, comma 0. And then this would just repeat over and over and over again. The Elman neural network used for this is going to have one input neuron and one output neuron. So we're going to basically feed in an input neuron and expect the next number in the sequence out. So the training data for this is going to basically become, in the first case, we would present a 0 and we would expect a 0 back. So this is the input and this is the output. So that's the first two. Then we'd also present another zero and expect a zero back. Then we look at the next pair, it's also zero, zero. Then we have a zero and we expect a one. This is a problem with a normal feed forward neural network. These could come in any order and what would be the correct output for a 0? It could be a 0, it could be a 1. Well, to really know what comes here, whether it's a 1 for the output or a 0, it's all a matter of context. Feed-forward neural networks don't have any context. So a feed-forward neural network could not, this training data, even if I wrote it out the rest of the way, would be useless to a feed-forward neural network because there is a disparity here. Sometimes a zero as the input means a zero. Sometimes the zero means you want to have a one as the next value here. So to train for this type of neural network, we need to create something called an Elman neural network. Jordan would work as well too. The, diff the two different types work for different neural network, or different problems. Let's look at the layers for this. You're going to have an input layer. This is your input layer.
it's going to have one neuron. You're going to have a hidden layer. The hidden neurons are there really just to um, just to help the neural network learn. An Elman neural network has just one hidden layer. We'll just arbitrarily say that we're going to have two neurons in the hidden layer for it to help learn. And then we're going to have an output layer. And the output layer is going to have a single neural net or single neuron one. So this is our input output. We feed in a zero. We're going to expect a zero back sometimes, a one back other times. It's going to feed forward just like this. Now normally I draw out the individual neurons, but I want you to see the layers this time. And we'll look at this entire thing represented as the individual neurons in just a second. But so far this is just a feed forward neural network. You've got the input, hidden, and output. But the trick is you have an additional layer here called a context layer. Now the context layer has to have the same number of neurons as the hidden layer. So it's going to have two. And that's the context layer. Now the context layer takes the output from takes its input from the output of the hidden layer. So the hidden layer output is really going to two places. It's going to the output and then it's going to the context. And then the context feeds itself back into the hidden two layer. Now this is weighted. There are weights here. This is not weighted. There are no weights here. This the values from the hidden layer just simply feed directly into the context layer. So the way this is going to work is this gives the neural network a sort of short-term memory. Whatever the output from the hidden layer that would go processed by the weights, and there are also weights on both of these synapses, just like a normal, or connections, just like a normal neural network. In addition to going to the output, these values get sent here and they're saved. Whatever it was from iteration one or any iteration, these values are saved and then fed through the weights just like using the same fundamental equation we saw before into the hidden layer. So it's constantly remembering the output from the hidden layer and refeeding it back in from the previous iteration into the hidden layer. So some of the activations from the hidden layer are going to be remembered and put into the context layer and come back from previous, previous items that were sent into it. And that's how the neural network maintains a sort of short-term memory. It's also important to note that this non-weighted layer would not have an activation function like the other layers would. Now let's look at this as actual neurons. We're going to have an input neuron that is going to receive a value from the from the external source. I mean it's going to be one of these inputs coming into it. So this is your input one neuron. You only have one single input but it's input one. And then you're going to have the hidden layer. The hidden layer is going to have two neurons, hidden one and hidden two. Input one is going to, and then we're also going to have a bias neuron, just like before. Bias neurons are important. This is B1.
And additionally, we need to represent these two context neurons. Well, these two context neurons are feeding into the hidden layer, so we're going to um, we're going to draw them up with the input neuron as well, right next to the bias neuron. Here we're going to have C1 and C2. Those are the two context neurons from the context layer. So you can see we've got a lot of neurons feeding into the two hidden neurons. And then as far as bias neurons are concerned, we have a bias neuron here It's bias 2, just like before, no real difference. There's no context neurons drawn here because there's only one layer of context neurons. And then, finally, we are going to have our one output neuron, O1. Now, there's a lot of connections, weights going on here. Input 1 is going to be connected to hidden 1 and hidden 2. The bias goes to hidden 1 and hidden 2. The bias, this bias neuron here is not connected. Both of those, as we've discussed before, get a value of 1 constantly fed into them. The two context neurons do feed into hidden 1 and hidden 2. And additionally here, there's a lot of connections going on. Then the output neuron takes its input from these three. So it's very important. You've got really three types of neurons going on on each level. You have the input, which is the white ones, which are actually receiving input from the previous layer. You have, the, you have the bias neurons, which always receive input of 1. And then you have the two context neurons. And the context neurons are going to be receiving the output from hidden 1 and hidden 2. But from the previous iteration. iteration minus 1. So if we're on iteration i, these two are going to come from the previous iteration. All the calculations done here are done with that same fundamental formula that I showed you before. You're going to basically take the weights, and all of these have weights. Every arrow that I drew here has weights. The only ones that don't have weights are when you copy, at the end of the iteration, H1 and H2 so that you remember them so that you can feed them into C1 and C2 for the next iteration. Now, initially, there's 0 because on iteration, on the first iteration, you don't have any previous values, so you would just feed zeros into there. And just like a normal feed-forward neural network, you're going to have an activation function at the gateway to each layer. So as this data is all going into hidden 1 and hidden 2, you're going to have an activation function. Likewise, down here, you're going to have a activation function. We would probably use a sigmoid activation function given that we have numbers in the range of 0 to 1. So just like before, you would take you would want to calculate what's coming into hidden 1. Well, what's, what's coming into hidden 1, just like we saw before, is the inputs to each of these four neurons going into hidden 1 times their respective weights, and then you sum up each of these times its respective weight, and that's what goes into hidden 1. So by drawing it out this way, we've basically reduced the Elman neural network to a sort of feed-forward neural network. This is important because now we can train it using techniques such as resilient propagation or backpropagation, just like we trained a feed-forward neural network. Now we'll learn more about training neural networks in later videos. Right now we're mainly concerned with how we actually calculate them. 
And with it drawn this way, we calculate it just like a feed-forward neural network. 